And today uh, we have a workshop. I mean, today we have a presentation. First, the presentation is from Tim Wang from TWNI. Tim, you, if you're ready, you can. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm Tim Wong from TWNIC, and uh, today I will do a brief uh, TWNIC update to you. Okay, uh, the outline is below. Uh, the first one is the statistic of TWNIC IP members, and the second one is the TWNIC uh, activities and the training program uh, last year, and uh, the TWNIC API update, and the last one is the, uh, some conclusion and the future works. Okay, so first you can uh, see uh, TWNIC uh, has 292 members now and uh, increased the uh, 54 members this year. And uh, our member uh, provides uh, various service to their customer, to the end user, uh, include the uh, fixed network and mobile network. So uh, for the IPv4 address allocation, TWNI has allocated uh, 132,728 uh, IPv4 address to our member. Now, uh, increased the uh, 538 uh, last year in 2019. For IPv6, uh, we have allocated uh, uh, 2,513 slash 32 IPv6 addresses and increased uh, 58, 32 uh, IPv6 address this year. And most of TWNIC members uh, have obtained IPv6 address and used them. Okay, and in this year, uh, last December, uh, we held the uh, 33rd TWNIC IP open policy meeting. And the keynote speech is, uh, the first one is the future of IP address registries in the internet governance uh, by Paul Wilson, uh, the direct general from EPINIC. And the second one is the legal cooperation to overcome jurisdiction and uh, to, uh, territorial limits in cybercrime investigations uh, by Chi Hu Chen, uh, the infrastructure and the development director uh, from EPINIC. And the list session uh, topic includes uh, cooperation SIG and the policy SIG, IPv6 deployment SIG and the cybersecurity SIG. So uh, if you, uh, you, can, you may find more detailed agenda and information on this below uh, website. Also, uh, in last December 9 to 11, uh, we have held the TWNIC APNIC joint training, the routing security workshop. Uh, there are uh, 33 attendees. And the lecturer is uh, Cheryl and uh, Muzamar from the uh, APNIC and the community trainer. So uh, it includes uh, many different topics uh, around the uh, internet routing basic and uh, some uh, RPKI, and uh, some uh, how to the ROV, ROA. So our uh, list workshop uh, will look at current uh, tools and the te techniques, uh, how RPKI is just a piece in the puzzle. So we should uh, to secure the internet uh, routing instead of waiting an ideal solution that fix all issues. And it's uh, not uh, only an introduction, uh, it's a, we do some uh, lab exercise 
and we use the Cisco iOS configuration syntax. Uh, for the IPv6 user availability, uh, last year, in, in this year, uh, we have the, our IPv6 uh, ratio is 42%, uh, is more than 42%. And uh, uh, in 2017, uh, we are only 0.46%. Uh, so it's good. Uh, uh, and now is the uh, global ranking is Taiwan is number nine in the global. Okay, and also we uh, have four times RPKI training last year, and uh, uh, we uh, help our uh, members uh, to use uh, how to set up the uh, our role, and the role coverage is increased after each uh, training course. And uh, it uh, includes the uh, RPKI introduction and the uh, uh, data introduction and uh, how to use the measurement system and the uh, router configuration. And we also share some uh, very invalid case study to them. S okay, so this, uh, this picture is the Taiwan RPKI, the global ranking. Uh, Taiwan is number nine, and the uh, RPKI ratio is uh, over 16, uh, over 96 almost 97 in uh, the, the world, in the global. And uh, the previous one is the global ranking. Uh, this one is the uh, RPKI ranking in Asia. Taiwan is number two. Yeah. Okay, so the last one is the conclusion. Uh, we have uh, 54 more members uh, last year. And uh, uh, we encourage and help our Taiwan ISP and some uh, service provider, all our members, to manage the role and to increase the coverage uh, gradually. And uh, we will uh, hold the IPv6 RPKI training and some activities this year continuously. And uh, welcome to attend the IPv6 deployment session uh, in this afternoon and in the same place here. Thank you. Thank you, Tim, for your presentation. Um, can you, yes, for if they might have your questions for you. Uh, Do we uh, have any questions, questions or comments on his presentation? No? Not interested in tutoring presentation? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, uh, I have uh, just uh, a question uh, in, you, uh, in your presentation. Um, you said, uh, I think it looks like uh, TW is pretty much focused on deploying I, uh, RPKI yes. project. And I'm just wondering, um, you know, what's it like, uh, the, uh, is there any um, ISP or members which deploy the I, uh, RPKI? Is there any member uh, deployed the RPKI? Uh, we are over uh, 100, uh, almost 150 members have uh, used RPKI to create the role on our management system. Yeah. So it includes uh, Chunghua Telecom, the, the biggest ISP in Taiwan. Yeah. So, uh, and some service provider. Is they are also used to RPKI, yes. Thank you. So, George, can I see the uh, agenda? Yeah. Um, can I see the agenda? I just want to. I didn't. Um, yes. To, uh, next uh, presentation will be from made will be made from IDNI. And anyone, I mean, lady, please.
this. Or the big word. Yes. Thanks. Okay. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Yeah. I'm David from INI. This morning, I want to update about our near operation in 2020. Yep. As an NIR, IDNIC is not only responsible for distributing IP address. We also have another responsibility. So the first is to serve our member. The second, we have to support the international development. And we also responsible to make some training and workshops. And we also do some cooperation with IPNIC. Yeah. The first point is about IP and IS number distribution. Yeah. In 2020, actually in February, we have around 1,700 members. It consists of some different types. It's a corporate and association. It's the most. And then ISP, the government, and also education. This is for our IP address allocation. For IPv4, we have around 2,000 slash 24 allocation. And IPv6, we have an 90, 16 million of slash 48 yeah. And the second is about how we serve our member. Yeah, the first thing we do is we built a system that have been launched since two years ago. It's called My IDNIC. It's actually there's a portal that we trimmed for more than 10 years ago, but now it's launched. We can do some things here, like minutes their own IP address and doing some huge updates. And now it's at a feature to add a ROA. The RCT is just basically just simple. Our huge database is doing NRTM synchronization with APNIC database and it's connect to my DNIC via an API. And also to serve our member better, we have to uh, update our member data because some of our member data is obsolete and we have a difficulties to contact them if we have some information or maybe to allow them to create a ROA or if there is a problem happen, we have some difficulties. So we have a process when we are updating our member data one by one and the result is we get a newest active <coughs> member statistics the member statistification, and we can increase the member engagement, and also we can segment our member into more detail. And after we do some data update, finally we can, uh, this year, last year, I mean, we have our second annual member meeting. And this one is better than the first annual member meeting. Yeah, it's, the highlight is we have also a workshop on APKI, APV6, and .1x, and we do uh, our near operation report, just like this one, and we have some keynote speaker also from APNIC, and we use a dual stack network in our conference. The total of attendance is around 300. Yeah, this is the our keynote speakers. One is from APNIC, is Mr. Vita Laksono, and we talk about some news RFCs from Johar Alam, and we discuss about security too, and, and other things. Yeah. And we also support the national internet development. We make an effort in yeah, RPKI, and finally in November, and we, I want to say thank you for the uh, APNIC staff, especially the George Michelson teams that helped us to set up this. And finally, in November, we can establish our RPKA server. Yep. And our roadmap in RPKA is halfly done. Our phase one is done. We have deployed an RPKA CA server and allow IDNIC member to create a ROA and just the third phase is just creating <coughs> the monitoring. And also we do some migrations in our APK systems. The reason is APK is a system that we are, is a critical system, yeah? And we have a difficulties with APK.NET systems 
and it's not commercially supported. So we choose Creel RPK ACA as our solution. The first reason is has a documented REST API. So we can easily integrate it with our system. And then it has an active development phase and also it offering a commercial support. So whether we need a support or this is the urgent problem, they can help us. And it's able to run the newest RFCs on APKI. And the state of APKI in Indonesia is increased dramatically. Yeah, uh, in this effort a uh, half year after we make some effort on workshops, it's increased from 1% to 9.3%. The work count is increased about a, a tweet, tweet two times from 500 to 1,000, just in a half year. But we have a problem with the Epic BGP advertisement that are covered by FKI. Is a decrease from 19 to uh, yeah, because this is just because uh, some misconfiguration from our member. They I think they forget to set the max length attribute, but we can fix it soon. Yeah. We, uh, we are facing some problems in Indonesia. The first problem is device compatibility. And then we have so many members in Indonesia. So we have a pilot project in Indonesia. This is in, basically, this is an internet exchange of a university that consists of 18 total peers. And the traffic for ESS is a far gigabyte, but this year, we have seven gigabit traffic. It's uh, doubled two times. And this also have unsupported device problem. So our solution is to deploy the route server. For IPv6 development, yeah, well, we have made some progress. The first is we found an ID IPv6 task force. And some national internet exchanges have implemented IPv6. One was Indonesia Internet Exchange, IAX, we found, and the second is Open IXP. And we allocate uh, IPv6 to our member is free of charge. But uh, we, we see in the statistics, maybe the Indonesia IPv6 uh, implementation is very low. It's on it's 0 0.31. Uh, yeah. But the progress is we are receiving requests from some members to upgrade their allocation from slash 48 to slash 32. And the last one that we see yeah, in this map is only this very low. But uh, we have some progress here. Last year, we just have 1.10% of implementation, but in six months, we have increased it to uh, 1.31. Uh, I think it's not fair to compare with the total of allocation in Indonesia, because uh, we are just now waiting for the big player in Indonesia, like uh, Broadband Telecom, to implement the IPv6, and this number will go far. And Majority traffic of IPv6 in Indonesia is a Google content, obligatory GGC. The next is we have some training on workshops this year. Actually, we done four times workshop in four different city. It covers about IPv6 and APKI. And the next workshop in 2020, we will focus on BGP basics, BGP advance, network security, and resource management. And our aim is to gather more members with training them with BGP physics basics, which will we do this for a community training. And the last one, we also have some cooperation with APNIC. The last one is last year, we visited APNIC office to learn more about the best practice of operating near operations. Yeah, that's all for me. Okay, thank you, David. Yep. Uh, anyone has questions, comments? Okay.
Okay, thank you, David. Yeah, you're welcome. Okay, uh, next uh, presentation is uh, from Kisa. Um, the speaker's name is uh, Sujin Yoon. Uh, please welcome her. She's, uh, I think uh, she is, uh, she is new to our community. Hello, <laughs> Hello, I'm Sujin Yoon from KR League. It's my first time joining APNIC events. I present <coughs> internal resource tests and plans of KR League. It is your presentation, I, so I skip it. The number of KLNIC members gradually increase. There is no change of IPS that can delegate. The number of S member reaches about 700. It might be over 700 at the end of this year. After 2011, I PV post test shows very minor increasing by newcomers. About IPv6, there was needs by mobile. After it, there is very few multiplication of getting IPv6. It, it shows similar aspect. One of the members handle IPv6. There is only change in two bytes ASN assignment. Internal resource tests of Korea have no dramatic change. It just increases slowly. Next part is last year's activity and this year's plans. It is last year's activities. Every year, KLNA KL compares on who is data to APNIX. From 2017, there is a system routine for matching IP allocation and reallocation information. It works monthly. Next is RDAP. KLNIC constructed RDAP service system through sending many queries and gathering response on our testbed. We tested our trial RDAP service. Unless this year's plan, we will open RDAP service in this year. Last year was the ending year of IPv6 project. We learned government and enterprise cooperation project for encouraging IPv6 usage and supporting it. To use IPv6 cloud service, Korean users had to use foreign service like Amazon, MS Azure. But we supported domestic enterprise broadband IDC to launch IPv6 based cloud service. Now Kore Korean users have one more choice. And the table says what IPv6 services are in Korea. We thought enterprise can cover IPv6 technology and environment. It is the reason why this project ended. As APNIC opened API testbed, KLNIC tested APIs and shared its results. And there is big change of KLNIC. System of KLNIC was located in Seoul, the capital of Korea. We moved to Naju last November. The reason of moving is following government plan to, for encouraging province economy. There were many steps over 100 for moving service safely. We plan to think 
One is opening out of service, and I mentioned it on previous slide. The other one is starting preparation for LOA. KLNIC new routing with route, route object is more speedy. We prepare to open LOA registration service to users, but it excludes constructing server for authorization. We just hand over users' route information to a PNE. We expect it will generate too many queries to APNIC, so I asked APNIC to help people easily handle it, for example, API open or massive upload. It is end slide. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Susan, for your presentation. Uh, questions, comments, anything you want to? Hmm. Okay, then thank you, Sujin. Next uh, presentation is from JP Nick, Hiroki san, please. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Hiroki Kawabata from JPNIC. Uh, I'm going to talk to you about JPNIC Uh I'm glad to uh, have this opportunity to share with you about our activities and statistics. Uh, this slide, uh, this is a very hard line of our presentation. Uh, first, I'll talk about uh, our activities, and next is statistics. Uh, first part is our activities. Uh, today, uh, I'll talk about uh, three topics. Uh, first topic is the IPv6. Uh, this slide shows the list of uh, events uh, which we hosted and uh, collaborated with related organizations. Uh, after uh, last September, uh, we hosted two uh, technical hands-on seminars and uh, plan to hold two hands-on seminars. Uh, in uh, last October, uh, CTV uh, equipment, equipment vendor uh, provided CMTS to us. Uh, we hold the uh, hands-on uh, seminar for CATB operators, uh, except this time uh, all seminars are uh, for general network operators. Uh, we expect we ex expected uh, that uh, the knowledge which uh, participants uh, were uh, was studied we use for uh, constructing uh, their IPv6 network. In November, uh, in no, uh, last November, uh, Tassan from APNIC uh, made presentation at uh, IPv6 summit. Uh, he shared uh, IPv6 status in Asia Pacific region. Uh, this slide shows uh, about uh, promoting IPv6 deployment in Japan. Uh, in Japan, uh, initiative for IPv6-based internet uh, are organized by uh, related organizations uh, for promoting IPv6. For example, uh, our uh, activities are JPNIC held uh, IPv6 seminars, uh, collaborated with uh, regional ISPs and the community uh, before uh, five years ago. This seminar uh, was uh, held in 19 states uh, in Japan. Uh, and uh, another organization, uh, IA Japan, uh, Japan is an uh, internet association in Japan, uh, held IPv6 summit to support IPv6 deployment in a rural area uh, from uh, 2003. Uh, after uh, last September, uh, this summit was uh, held uh, in one city. Uh, totally, uh, this event uh, was held at uh, 30 37 cities from the beginning. <clears throat> uh, 
Uh, now uh, it said uh, that there are less IPv6 geolocation data than IPv4. Uh, in some cases, uh, using geolocation data, uh, the de determination of uh, the region uh, and or, uh, uh, country is not correctly, uh, which is one of the reasons that, uh, that uh, content service provider hesitate to uh, provide service with IPv6. Uh, sometimes uh, they want to uh, provide uh, content uh, only to a uh, limited area. In Japan, uh, many, ISP, uh, many ISPs provide IPv6 service using uh, IPOE technology. Uh, IPOE is so for IP over Ethernet. Uh, they, uh, established uh, IPOE Council and a working group for uh, geolocation issue. Uh, JPNIC joined uh, this working group as an uh, observer uh, from last year. Uh, every uh, working group member uh, bring uh, their own data and uh, make database to share it with members. <coughs> In the future, uh, working group member and content service provider uh, want to uh, improve uh, current uh, situation uh, through uh, using this uh, database. Uh, next topic is uh, the collaboration with uh, other communities. Uh, there are many regional nodes and uh, regional communities in Japan. Uh, during this time, uh, we participated uh, some node meetings uh, each as uh, Inog. Uh, Inog is a uh, Ichigo network operators group. Uh, Ichigo area is uh, located in uh, central Japan. Uh, we made a presentation about uh, constructing with database service in JPNIC. In the uh, end of this January, a general 45 meeting was held in Sapporo. Uh, Sapporo is located in the North Japan area. Janog uh, is a national network operators group in Japan. Uh, in this time, uh, JPNIC made uh, the presentation about uh, who is uh, and uh, related policy topics. Uh, George Odaki-san from uh, APNIC was made a presentation about uh, Prop 1 to 3. Uh, we supported his presentation by uh, translating their ma material and uh, following up uh, their pre presentation in the panelists. Uh, in, in addition to this, in December, uh, we sent my colleague Koki-san to uh, APNIC for training. Uh, the last topic is uh, in uh, this part is a uh, JPNIC Open Policy Meeting. Uh, now, uh, JPNIC Policy Meeting is uh, moderated by uh, Japan Open Policy uh, Forum Steering Team, uh, who is an uh, independent organization from uh, JPNIC. This meeting was held at uh, last November. Uh, in this time, uh, there are one policy proposal. Uh, we also have our original policy development, pro uh, development process. Uh, this proposal uh, aims to uh, define the uh, process to uh, expire proposal, uh, which does not reach consensus and, uh, unless a new version is provided. Uh, in addition to uh, this policy proposal, uh, there are some information sessions. Uh, you can see the meeting agenda in this slide. Uh, I'd like to uh, move on to the next uh, part. Today uh, I will introduce statistics, uh, statistics but uh, please let me skip more slides. Uh, this slide shows the uh, uh, statistics, statistics of IP member and legacy resource holder. Uh, IP member uh, manage no legacy resources and uh, they are the same as uh, LIR in APNIC. <coughs> A legacy resource holder, uh, holders are the organization who uh, assigned prefix from uh, internet and so on uh, before uh, JPNIC was established. A bar, bar graph in the left side of this uh, sorry, a bar graph in the left side of this slide is a number of uh, IP members. Uh, 161 uh, members are delegated IP before only uh, at the end of this January. Uh, 288 uh, members are IPv4 and IPv6. Uh, six members are only IPv6. Uh, sorry, uh, six members are IPv6 only. Pie graph shows the total number of uh, IP members and uh, legacy resource holder. Uh, we have uh, 455 IP members, and uh, it, it, it is uh, 30 percent. Uh, the number of uh, legacy resource holder uh, uh, about one, uh, about one thousand, uh, and uh, it's uh, it's uh, 
65%. The map uh, in the right side of this slide is the uh, number of IP member by region. Uh, this side is skip and this side does mix this. Uh, mix this. Uh, <coughs> sorry. Uh, uh, this slide shows uh, market transfer uh, is on this slide. Uh, we have completed uh, 408 uh, eight transfers. Uh, sorry, uh, 408 uh, eight IPv4 transfers and uh, seven S number transfers. Uh, compared with the last term, uh, 18 IPv4 uh, market transfers were, uh, transfers were added. Uh, according uh, our transfer uh, log, it seems that uh, the organization who uh, want to be received the uh, large blocks uh, is uh, transferred from alien and the ripe NCC member. Uh, this train will, will continue for a while. Uh, the last uh, statistics is uh, RPKI. Uh, we are now providing RPKI experimental service. Now uh, we issue 101 uh, resource certificates. Uh, the coverage, uh, covering ratio for IPv4 uh, prefix is a uh, 9.3 percent, and uh, whole IPv6 is a uh, 50, 56 point uh, eight percent. Uh, recently, uh, we usually uh, receive a uh, request from our member. Uh, it seems uh, that they want to know uh, how to start uh, RPK and uh, uh, ROV. ROV is a uh, resource origin validation. Uh, uh, we are uh, providing uh, regular RPK training course. Uh, many uh, participants joined, uh, joined this course and uh, got knowledge from these sessions. Okay, uh, that's all uh, from us, thank you. Thank you. Um, anything you want to ask? Okay, David, please go to mic, please. Okay, I'm David from IDNIC. Uh, I'm interested that JPNIC started to create a geolog attribute. Uh, my question is how you encourage your member to put their geolog and how you validate? Yep, thank you. Mm -hmm. About uh, RPK? Uh, about geolog attribute. Hmm? Geolocation? Yep. Yes. Uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, sorry, uh, my colleague Taiji uh, will follow up. Uh, may I? Yeah. Maybe I. <clears throat> actually, I don't know the details, so maybe Hiroki help me. Uh, we don't have a geolocation record in our database, who is database. But uh, some commercial companies started to. Uh, provide geolocation data to the commercial companies and they use our database so the project should be direct, uh, related to the relationship between the commercial geolocation company and who is data. Uh, would you help me about uh, what's going on about the uh, I think that percentage of the coverage of the geolocation, I think. And sorry, I don't know the details. <laughs> uh, as you, David, you, know, you may know, the commercial comp geolocation companies provide the geolocation data uh, without uh, confirming the who is database itself. They gather their own database with some data sources. Uh, but the, sometimes they need to compare with the who is database. 
then we are talking with the private companies, geolocation private companies, I think. Is that correct? Yeah, it's okay. Okay. Thank you, David and uh, Taiji. Um, any questions further? Okay, then thank you, Hiroki san. Thank you very much. So next uh, presentation on is uh, from Vinnik, Vinnik update. My name is Huyen. I'm a communication and cooperation of VNIC. Uh, it's my pleasure to be here today to give you a brief update on uh, VNIC. Uh, what we do, some uh, internet resources, statistics, uh, basic deployment in Vietnam, VNIC update, and uh, upcoming, our upcoming plans. The first part is about VNIC. Uh, I know you all are familiar with VNIC, uh, that we are an uh, affiliation of Ministry of Information and Communication uh, that uh, serve the function of management of .vn domain name, IP address, ASN, and uh, national critical information infrastructure in Vietnam. So the year 2020, this year, marks the 20th anniversary of VNIC. Uh, we uh, have published a report on um, uh, Vietnam Internet Resources uh, that present a full picture of uh, Internet Resources development in Vietnam in the last 20 years uh, and the growth of VNIC. So I uh, hope that it may benefit you if you want to uh, have a reference source of uh, Internet Resources in Vietnam. Uh, you can go to the link on the slide or scan the QR code. The next part is uh, IPSN statistics and IPSN uh, deployment in Vietnam. You can see some uh, statistics on the slide. Now we have 60 new IP members uh, by 2019, in total of uh, 443 members. The highlight is the constant increase in IPSN adoption rate in Vietnam uh, that reached more than 40 two percent uh, by February that I look at uh, up in the IBNIC measurement yesterday. Um, so the ISP and mobile providers uh, continue to drive IBSIC adoption in Vietnam. The year 2019 was our final year of Vietnam National IBSIC Action Plan. So for this year, actually next month in March, on March, we will have a conference, like a ceremony to announce that the action plans were accomplished uh, and we will have a report uh, what uh, did we do to promote IOSIC in Vietnam. We uh, had um, developed the policy to require IOSIC uh, support in government agency uh, for e-government uh, for e-government services uh, level 3 and 4 um, we promote IVSIC uh, via public media and in our annual events like Vietnam IVSIC Day event. And we did the training. Uh, by now, we uh, had conduct uh, 50 IVSIC training courses during the years. Uh, last month, we collaborated with ITU to do a, a workshop on IVSIC deployment over 5G network, because uh, our next objectives is to promote IPv6 on uh, 5G and IoT uh, to increase IVC content in the domestic and continue to uh, promote IVC for government agencies. Because um, even the action plans were accomplished, but uh, right now in Vietnam, there are only uh, more only 67% of uh, 
government agencies network has not been changed to IPv6. So uh, VNX had initiated uh, the program called IPv6 for Gov, and we will continue to uh, support the government agency in their deployment. So the next part is VNX update. Uh, VNI is a neutral and non-profit uh, that interconnect ISP in Vietnam via three points uh, in Hanoi City, in Ho Chi Minh City, and Da Nang City. We are now have uh, we have now 21 members with the total bandwidth uh, of 290 gigs. In 2019, we adopted new policy to um, develop VNI as international standard. Before, uh, VNH just, um, the member of VNH uh, are just uh, ISP in Vietnam, but now we support more ties of uh, peering connection and uh, support uh, and allow all members who have IP address, ASN, assigned by VNH to connect to VNH. Uh, our targets, actually our mission that uh, the ministry give to VNH that we have to reach uh, 100 uh, VNI members in this year, while we now just are uh, 21 members. That is pretty challenging. So to promote uh, more members to connect to VNI, we have upgraded our system, uh, we uh, improve our connection quality, and we have launched new services in 2019. They are DOS mitigation, speed test, uh, looking glass, and another two new service will be launched in this year are uh, NTP and DNS root. The final content is our upcoming plans for IPv6. Um, as I mentioned, uh, next month we will hold a closing event, uh, closing event to announce that uh, the IPv6, uh, IPv6 action plans were accomplished. Uh, and promote our next uh, uh, our next um, project to uh, promote IV6 for government agencies. Uh, on April, uh, VNX is expecting a technical visit to IVNX uh, for our NIR management system. We will not, we have planned to upgrade. Uh, as um, our management system at NIR standard. And hopefully it will be done by this June. On 20 to 21st August, we will have uh, VNA knock. I see some uh, familiar faces that uh, contribute to our knock, Hiroki, Taiji. Uh, this is our annual event to uh, exchange a technical information, emerging technologies among VNI members and uh, technical community in Vietnam. Another event is DNS Forum. This is initiated by VNI, and this will be the first DNS Forum in Vietnam. So this is all I want, would like to update. I would be very, if you are uh, happy with, if you have any question. Okay, I think that's all good, thank you. Thank you. Okay, um, the next uh, presentation is uh, Abhishek from Aydin. Do we um, have uh, Abhishek here? Oh, okay. Good morning, all. Uh, uh, thank you for having me in. I am Abhishek. I'm representing IRN and, and would like to uh, present uh, the statistics and the activities, the major activities which we have done in the recent past uh, with regards to the IRN. Uh, so uh, my presentation is going to, uh, is divided into two parts, uh, the statistics in which I'm going to present 
I am going to uh, say about uh, the affiliates, uh, the number of resource allocations, and uh, and the state-wise and ASN allocation status, and then and the major activities which we have done uh, uh, in, in the in the iron uh, in the day-to-day -day iron operations. So starting uh, with the activities, uh, we have uh, till uh, till Feb 10th of Feb, we have 2,873 uh, affiliates. And, uh, and, and the graph is growing uh, day by day. We are adding new affiliates uh, increasingly. And in the last one year, we have added 260 affiliates uh, in our account. Uh, till date, we have uh, allocated uh, 10.9 million IPv4 addresses and, uh, and a huge uh, number of IPv6 address as well. Uh, 6.5 billion of uh, 50 slash 56 subnet. And uh, the, al the allocation of ASN stands at 1,895, in which uh, primarily we have allocated four byte ASNs. Uh, talking about the IPv4 and IPv6 uh, allocation uh, year-wise, uh, as we can see, uh, uh, it's, it's, in the, it's in the graph before you. Uh, last year, we, uh, we added 231 uh, IPv4 addresses and 35 IPv6 allocation addresses. Still, IPv6 allocation is not at that pace which is expected. And, uh, and the below uh, 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 Venn diagram shows uh, uh, the allocation of IPv4 and IPv6, as you can see. So uh, we have uh, 596 uh, affiliates serving both IP IPv4 and IPv6, and 2,868 uh, only IPv4. Uh, this is the state-wise allocation state, uh, affiliation status. We have uh, these. These are the state-wise affiliates which we have currently in India. ASN allocation status. Uh, in this year, we have allocated uh, only four byte ASN, which stands at 32. So uh, this is uh, IP basis uh, evolution, which I'm going to talk about. Uh, which is currently in in uh, in increasing trend in India. Uh, so uh, when when we talk about the capability of IP6, it is immense. Uh, it's it stands at 62.6 percent in India, and uh, the primary reason for the IPv6 allocation is uh, is the is that uh, is the is the government policies uh, upgradation of government policies in which uh, the ipv National Deployment Task Force is one of the measures which has been taken by the DOT. And uh, India has uh, the fastest growing of uh, internet population with the emergence of technologies like Internet of Things. And telecom operators are adding uh, more to the ipv capabilities uh, in India. So as you can see in the next slide that major telecom operators in India are contributing in terms of uh, users, uh, in terms of uh, GDP, and percentage of IPv6 uh, density in India. So Reliance, Jio, Bharti, Airtel, uh, Vodafone are the few major telecom operators which are adding more and more network POPs in their network and um, upgrading their, uh, upgrading their, uh, their networks through the IPv6 and leaving behind their legacy IPv4 slowly. So this is one of the major factors. Uh, the telecom operators are adding, uh, adding, uh, adding huge values for the IPv6 advancement. So uh, the, uh, the activities, uh, the major activities which we have done in the last uh, six to eight months is that we have added more than 2,000 uh, ROS, uh, route object authorization, prefix for our affiliates. Uh, this we are doing on our own. Uh, the affiliates uh, reach out to us and ask to create the ROS, and this is the figure. And apart from this, uh, we have uh, created uh, the, uh, the Iron Hoist server environment in which we have set up the NRTM server, and uh, it has been uh, developed uh, in-house. So uh, these are the major activities which we have done. That's it for me. Any questions? Any questions? Thank you. Thank Abhishek. you. Thanks.
Well, we still have uh, another 25 minutes. Uh, um, oh, Taiji, sorry. Hi, uh, Taiji from JP Nick. Uh, uh, it's not a question for you. Uh, this is a kind of a, a small announcement. Uh, we, I mean, the George, JP Nick, and me kept uh, one uh, time frame this afternoon to discuss about the technical things, uh, RPKR or RDAP, uh, <coughs> continuously from the yesterday's workshop. But um, it depends on the needs to discuss and needs to uh, get together at the same room. So if you have uh, any discussion items or if you want to discuss together with other NIRs, uh, please come to me or come to George Kuo uh, to do the continuous discussion uh, afternoon. The time frame is 3.30 p.m. to uh, 5 p.m. Uh, I think it would be one and a half hour or two hours. To, to four thirty, so one hour. Ah, uh, five hours. <laughs> so five p.m. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Taiji. So, anyone, those who are interested, please uh, join the workshop. In the afternoon. And uh, since we don't, we finish, we, we have done all the agenda, uh, we may finish or if anyone wants to say about, you know, uh, any, anything to say about, please come to the mic. If not, I just want to uh, ask some questions um, to you guys. Actually, I talked with Zenyu, who is a co-chair of this SIG, and we have done, you know, um, this NIR SIG for a long time, 20 years, over 20 years, and maybe we worked very hard, so that's why not much thing, we, we are very clear each other, so that's why, uh, you know, um, we don't have much uh, further questions or comments, but uh, um, we want to talk more. Uh, we need to talk more. We have to, I think we can be better than this, uh, not just exchanging statistics. To be honest, uh, I mean, um, like for example, uh, um, maybe each NIRs now different situations. Some, some NIRs is working closely with the government and some NIRs has their own laws. Maybe some NIRs just uh, 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 adopt APNIC policy as it is, some is not. So under different situation, I think uh, we may have a, you know, some problem. Or, and maybe if we, uh, can, if we bring those problems here and talk to each other, um, seek solutions, maybe we learn each other. So like for example, um, KISA, um, recently, uh, we have a um, small. We had a small problem with uh, one of our members, which is IDC. Uh, IDC announced uh, allegedly uh, known, you know, stolen IP address prefix. So there was some complaint and involved. And so here, uh, this is an unprecedented one. It's uh, first one happens. So we didn't know how to react. So we. Uh, uh, we discussed with uh, APNIC what is uh, the best, uh, you know, thing we can do as a registry, because no one, uh, we don't have uh, any, you know, answers, and there's no cases before, and uh, I we didn't know that. So George and I, did, uh, George, uh, um, um, George Kuo and uh, myself and other concerned people get together, and we decided, uh, you know, just to advise them. That, uh, for now, this is uh, 
best uh, you know, thing we can do. So these kind of things, uh, we, I, I want to hear, uh, see you guys talk about, talk uh, in this session. I think it should be better, I think it's better. So that's my small suggestion. Other than that, um, yeah, I'm very happy to share with you guys uh, this session. And uh, also, uh, anyone has anything to suggest or offer? From Taiji, yeah, again. Hi, Taiji from JP Nick. Thank you, Billy. Uh, this is an uh, operational thing. Uh, we have uh, research on the uh, routing table uh, on unallocated addresses. And we already have found uh, several prefixes are announced in uh, ASS. Uh, it's it's uh, uh, mm, but we already have s almost of uh, almost of them. We already have solved because the almost of the announcements are misconfiguration or the configuration have been left, uh, just left. They, they are not the malicious one. But if in future, if we have more complex situation, uh, maybe we can contact to the network operator who announced the unallocated addresses. Maybe we can help each other to contact them, I think. Okay, thank you, uh, Taizi. Uh, does uh, any uh, the uh, uh, NIR has, has have experience to cooperate cooperate uh, with uh, uh, LEA? I mean, uh, law enforcement agencies in terms of this kind of cyber crime. Any NIRs or any NIRs which has which has uh, some like the proper, I mean, the certain ways to collaborate, like system or you have? Does APNIC do? George? If there's any you know, example, um, can you? So your question is if APNIC collaborated with the uh, uh, LEAs LEA. or it's yes, uh, in the there's been uh, uh, what an event called ISC. Actually, that's been held in in Seoul in Korea for the past few years, and uh, APNIC uh, has participated in the events mm. in the f in the form of information sharing and mm. and and just explaining uh, to the LEA about uh, who is database, basically. Uh, no, uh, what I want, my question is uh, not just uh, participating or attending the meeting or workshops, but just the actual case that you collaborated with the LEAs, like to investigate, invest in investigating internet address resources. I mean, you know, the thing what we had, uh, uh, you know, what we discussed, the, uh, I don't know how how deeper it goes, but um, if it gets uh, serious, then yeah, I'm just concerned if we have to think about at that stage collaborating with the LEAs or if there's any cases. Uh, uh, with yeah. with my experience, I I can share that uh, you know uh, we receive uh, questions or sometimes email from the LEA to to mm. ask information about IP address registration mm -hmm. and so on. So it is just like a business as usual as if we would receive from any query from all other sources. Yeah. Okay, thank yeah. you. Thank you. Okay, Maimura san Yes, thank you very much, Billy. Now, this is Akinori Maimura from JPNIC. Um, for our case, the, uh, yes, the, we have some clear, clear criteria for uh, disclosing the, the information from our, from our database. Mm -hmm. One is the warrant. Mm -hmm. 
but uh, we seldom have received a warrant for this. But uh, we sometimes get uh, some kind of official letter from a law enforcement agency. Then in that case, we uh, for the response uh, uh, disclose something. But uh, the usually the uh, the IP uh, IP address database is not really telling many many things. But uh, once the, the the IP address is linked to the the ISP, then uh, it is it is much more useful for the LEA to contact uh, contact ISP to uh, get a further information. That's a situation in Japan to share with you. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah, I, uh, George Kuo again from APNIC. I also just wanted to add after my Morrison's comment. So. Uh, in case of any questions, uh, queries coming from any other sources, uh, uh, we are able to share any information that we have uh, that's already available in the public WHOIS database, because uh, we do also have some comf uh, uh, confidential information that, that uh, or uh, pri with APNIC privacy statement that we do follow uh, that we don't disclose any uh, confidential information. But in some rare cases, if there's uh, a request to uh, any information like that, that we'll need to uh, receive uh, a warrant, something uh, similar to that. Yeah, but I'm not sure if Craig is here can make comments. But yeah, that's what I can share. OK, thanks. thanks. OK, like this, I want to listen more from you guys. But next time, I hope uh, I can hear from you guys more. And since, uh, uh, do we have anything, anyone? OK, then I want to adjourn the meeting. But don't leave speakers. Come here for group photo. Thank you.